Should we go check it out, Anna? Should we go check it out? <laughs> Oh, there she is. If you watched the, if you, if you, and action. If you watched the last video, you know we picked up a new combine yesterday. Same exact thing as what we had last year. It's another 780, just a couple years newer with less hours. I explained a couple reasons as to why we traded. But first thing this morning, I've got the boys. Last year there was a girl with, so maybe boys and girls from Crary coming out. We're gonna put a Crary big top extension up on there. Make sure this thing can hold a few more bushels. And since it's a beautiful morning, I'm gonna open the doors wide open because I love September mornings and it's just always nice and cool. You don't start sweating immediately, it's perfect. I have roughly an hour before they get here with our parts and we can get started. So I think I'm gonna do what I've been putting off for about a year now and clean a little shop up in this area. It's a work in progress here. I didn't get this finished. You guys are early. <laughs> We're early. Huh? You're early. I make it a point in my life to make sure I'm never early to anything. All right, 20 minutes early. It's always on time. You guys brought the green kit. Yes. Oh, I was. Do you make them in red? We do. You do. I was. Would that look funny up there? Should I stick with green or? I think green looks good. <laughs> green or black. How many bushels is this supposed to add? This will add 100 bushel proven onto your capacity. 100, right on. What do you want? I don't know, you had free stuff, you said. I do, yeah. Now it's starting to look a little cleaner around here. Pretty vertical? Yep. Yeah. Pretty maybe, close? Maybe close another tad. Okay. Hold on, I am just oh. moving okay. Easy, Mitch. There we go. Yeah, that looks nice. You know, when we started, there was a breeze up here. Yes, and now that it has is. gone away. Yeah, it's gone away. All right. Similar a couple of years ago. Similar. The other one? A little brutal up here. These guys are saying that these hoppers are notorious for cracking out in the corners right here. So. Actually, some of this paint's already cracking right through here. So they've got support brackets right here that we're gonna bolt on. That's gonna keep this stronger. It sounds like they crack with or without the extensions, so we're gonna stiffen those up. You're doing it right. You I guess. You something, you're doing it right. Yeah, I guess so. Come on, Grasshopper. Let's figure this out. Oh. One. Let's, let's put this one in. Chase. Need a smaller bit first thing to open it up. Uh, I don't know how thick it is yet. I went through some metal and then some fiberglass and now metal again. I know it's going to fall through and I'm going to tumble forward and whack my face <laughs> into everything. <laughs> That's a long ways through there. <laughs> You get four layers. Three layers. Oh, I saw it. <laughs> it's down there. Hmm. Get there. Yeah, I'll go here. Okay. A little more. Yep. Yep. There. So we gotta zip those all everything has just gotta be tightened up, I think. Yep. 
a solid two hours here and those guys are about done. They're gonna finish up while I run to town here quick. We've actually got a meeting with an attorney to look at some transition stuff here at the farm. So I saw a nice little comment on Twitter the other day. Somebody mentioned transition plans and if the younger generation wants to buy the farm, maybe they should just buck up and buy the farm. I thought that was cute, but you're gonna lose the farm in the process if you don't do any planning. So that guy can go ahead and do that. We're gonna try and structure our transition so the government doesn't take 70% of it away in the process. Prices on the Chicago Board of Trade, December corn, 691, that's up 12 and three quarters. Well, that went well. I need some AC rolling in here. Hi, can I get a number 14 bootlegger with cheese, Dr. Pepper, and the salt and vinegar chips? It's got lettuce on it, so you know it's healthy. Looks like the big top is all done. That is nice, that is sweet. I think for my next trick, I'll go and get the thing that we're going to hook to the front of this, this fall. Well, one of the things, one of the things. There's a guy coming to, he'll be, you'll see. It's a, it's 100% ready and it's on our trailer. Okay, I will uh, see, I'll either grab that today or tomorrow. Okay, Th yeah, thanks Daryl. Our flex head is ready. That's the one that was in the shed this spring that got damaged, so I can go pick that up from the dealer anytime. And Onyx is home from school. Let's go get this exciting new addition to the farm now that we've established that our bean header is done at the dealer. What? We have two combines. We may as well have two soybean headers. Hey, Isla. The new one. Huh? Which one is the new one? The new one to us is the one on the right. That one? Nope. Which hand is your right hand? This one? That one. Which way is the right in the door? Which door is to your right? Yes, that's right. The one that's correct. This way? Yes. It doesn't look like both of them are the It doesn't look like both are the same? They're a little bit different. We're going to put this header on the new one to us. What do you think of this header? Not much of an opinion yet. So this is a brand new Honeybee Airflex SDX 45 foot. Uh, Jason is actually coming up tomorrow morning. The Jason from last year's video that helped me set up the 40 footer we had here. He is gonna be here to make sure we have got this thing all set up and working beautifully. We've got some parts for it in the shop. We're gonna mount up, make sure everything is adjusted just right. That way we are ready to go as soon as these soybeans are good. Which means, of course, that our 40-foot deer header with the Prairie Wind system on it is gonna go on our 9870. So we will have both machines up and running, each with their own headers, very similar to what we had going on last year. They look the same? You can't see anything in the front or the back that's different? Yeah. Uh, look at the tops. Do the tops look different? I can't see the tops. You can't see the tops? They're a little bit different, but they look pretty close. The tops are different, yes. So long story short, I'm not gonna do anything with this today other than park it right here in the yard so that it's ready to go when Jason gets here tomorrow morning, probably on the next video. As long as I'm in the skid loader, I do have a couple odds and ends I gotta do. There's actually an open hole for moving trees down here that I wanna fill just to make sure the kids don't end up in it with a four-wheeler or something. And a few ledges like this just to level off. See that right there? That's a good dog. If anyone shows up to mess with these kids, that dog will grab you by the neck with her teeth. Keep that in mind, okay? Clearly I need a lot more dirt than that. Things are close enough to leveled off now, but Onyx did leave this big dirt mound right here, and I've just had to mow around it so far. And I own a Polaris Turbo 1000 Razor now, so I should turn that into something useful. Hey, 
and the home of the brave. My wife is not going to be that impressed by this. What? Looks like you have some good ideas. I was just leveling out the dirt pile. You think I'm going to need a landing? I don't think you can hit that too flat. I was just going to cowboy up and see what happens. Like do one of these things. Okay, next up, I think I'm going to hook the grain cart to the 8320RT, but first I'm going to take the four-wheeler and check which hitches they each have, because I don't remember what the grain cart takes or what the RT has in it. Okay, guessing that pin is in here on the floor. Nope, it's not, but I'm going to start it up anyway, get some AC going in here. That's just the normal, whatever size pin normally goes with that tractor. Like this one. I just remembered, I think we have a little washer, they call it a drawbar saver. It's a poly piece from May West that I think we had in the hitch there last year. I'm not positive, but I know we've run it in some things. It just goes around the pin and takes some of the slack out. Like this one right here. That one looks well used. You want to drop the jack and I'll drive the tractor? No? That never happens. Oh, that never goes that easy either. Okay, let's test here. Got the gate on the correct one. Got the spout correct. Holy buckets. I got every hydraulic line right where we want them. This is going smoothly. And the PTO is running. And it sounds smooth. That is wonderful. As long as the combines are in the shop and we're going through that header tomorrow, I'm just going to park this over on the shed pad because I think we'll just pull this in the shop and go through it someday. Because we got to run through the tractor for maintenance anyway, so we'll do the tractor and the grain cart at the same time, put the scale in, and we'll have everything ready here. This shouldn't take long, a half a day maybe at the most. Just backing it into the shed here with Didge guiding me. It's always comforting having a dog like Didge help you back something up. That way, if you're gonna run into something, she would say absolutely nothing and just watch it happen. But in all honesty, in my profession, that would make amazing YouTube content. Now I'm gonna do some touch up with this thing now that I got some dirt moved down there. Certainly nothing important, it's just something that I'd like done. A little warm in here. I have new areas that I couldn't get to before, that now I must mow. Okay, I got all that yucky, disgusting, ugh, that long grass all cut. Just one more thing to try before I take uh, myself to go get a haircut. Mm -hmm.